Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Vile and welcome to my A-Level Chemistry YouTube channel. The purpose of this channel is all about getting you ready for your A-Level Chemistry exams. And this video is going to focus on one of the more tricky topics within the A-Level syllabus, and that is all about buffer solutions. So we're going to look at what, what we mean by the term a buffer solution. How do you make a buffer solution? Why are they useful? And then we'll look at some calculations involving buffers as well. If you find these videos helpful, remember to subscribe, remember to like the videos and share them with your friends. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is what actually is a buffer? Well, a buffer solution is one that can resist changes in pH when you add small amounts of either acid or alkali. So it can keep a stable pH, assuming that you add a small amount of acid or alkali. If you add a huge amount of acid or a huge amount of alkali, then yes, the pH will change, but we're talking about small amounts. So why are they useful? They're useful for things like storing biological molecules, where the biological molecule has to be kept at a constant pH. So for things like enzymes as well, very, very useful when you need to control the pH, as well as calibrating pH meters. So a pH meter is a little gadget. You can put the probe into the solution and it will tell you what the pH is on a digital screen as opposed to using universal indicator. But you need to calibrate the pH meter by using buffer solutions. So, for instance, you might have a pH 4 buffer a pH 7 buffer, a pH 10 buffer. And what you do is you program the little computer to say this is what pH 4 looks like, this is what pH 7 looks like, and so on. And therefore the computer knows what it looks like under those pHs and can give you accurate readings. So useful for lots of different things. And what we're going to look at is how you make buffers and how you can control the pH of the buffer. And we'll uh, do some calculations with that. So how do you make a buffer? Well, firstly, I just want to clarify that we're going to be looking at acidic buffers. Acidic buffers, that's what this video is going to focus on. There are alkaline buffers as well, and I shall make a video on that, I'm sure, at some point. But we're just going to focus in, in this video, on acidic buffers. And the way that you make an acidic buffer, well, there's two ways. The first one is you take a weak acid. So you take a weak acid and you react it with a strong base. And when you react a weak acid with a strong base, you form the salt and you form water. Now, what I want you to imagine is that you use an excess of the weak acid. Now, when you have a excess of the weak acid, you will consume all of the strong base. So there's no strong base left, which means that you're left with a mixture of the weak acid and the salt that has formed in solution. So your buffer solution is a mixture of this weak acid and salt. So that's one way of making a buffer solution. The other way would simply be to take a weak acid and dissolve your salt in the weak acid. That would be another way of doing it. Uh, so for an example, if you had ethanoic acid, now ethanoic acid has the formula CH3COOH, and you react it with sodium hydroxide, Which has the formula NaOH. Then the salt that forms is sodium ethanoate. Now sodium ethanoate has the same formula as the ethanoic acid except for we've substituted the hydrogen for a sodium and then we said the byproduct is water. And because the weak acid is in excess, 
where you've effectively consumed all of the sodium hydroxide, so you end up with a mixture of the ethanoic acid and the sodium ethanoate in water, which is what your buffer solution is. And you might be at this point pondering, well, why does that make a buffer? What, how does this all work? I'm going to try and explain that now on the next slide. So how would this particular buffer solution work? Well, there's a couple of things to consider. By the way, if you don't uh, know what I mean by Le Chatelier's principle, I would strongly recommend pausing this video now and going and having a look at one of my other videos which covers Le Chatelier's principle because how buffers work is all dependent on an understanding of that. I'll try and explain it as I go along here, but you do need to have a base understanding of Le Chatelier's principle uh, to go any further with this really. The first thing to bear in mind in our buffer solution is that the salt, remember we produce a salt, so CH3COONA, when the salt is in solution, it fully dissociates into the ethanoate ion and the sodium ion in solution, which means there's loads of this ion here floating around. But also you have your acid, which is your uh, ethanoic acid, now, because ethanoic acid is a weak acid, it partially dissociates into H plus ions and the ethanoate ion. So this is some of the sort of underlying chemistry of what's going on in your buffer. But what happens if you add H plus ions to start off with? Well, if you add H plus ions into your buffer, in theory, the concentration of the H plus here starts to go up. And what it does is it shifts the equilibrium to the left hand side to consume the excess H plus ions, hence keeping the pH constant. So adding a bit of acid, which is effectively H plus, the H plus concentration starts to build up, but it shifts the equilibrium to the left hand side so as to keep the concentration of the H plus constant. So that's the first thing. What happens if you add H plus ions? Another thing that happens is the H plus ions will react with the ethanoate ion, same thing really, uh, to form ethanoic acid and hence the concentration of the H plus remains constant. But what if you add OH minus ions, which is what happens if you add a base well, the OH minus ions will react with the H plus ions to form water, which means in theory, the concentration of the H plus ions starts to drop. But what equilibrium does is it shifts to the right hand side to make more H plus ions to compensate for those that have been lost. Hence, the concentration of the H plus ions remains relatively constant. And that's in a nutshell how buffers work, especially the acidic ones. So to do calculations with buffers, we need to know this equation. The concentration of H plus is equal to the Ka value for the weak acid. Now, if you're a bit confused by what I mean by weak acids and strong acids, I do have a separate video that goes through that. So do check that one out. But when you have a weak acid, it has an acid dissociation constant Ka. And then we times that by the concentration of the acid. So square brackets, then acid divided by the concentration of the salt. And remember at this point that we know that pH is minus log of H plus. So therefore, if we know the pH, we could calculate the concentration of H plus and vice versa. But also pKa, which sometimes comes up in the exam questions, is simply minus log of Ka. And what we're going to do now is look at several examples to see how we use this equation to solve problems. Okay, so buffer calculation number one. 
In this question, a student has added 12 and a half centimetres cubed of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide to 25 centimetres cubed of hydrofluoric acid of a concentration 0.1 mole per dm cube, and it forms a buffer solution. Now, it's worth noting, and this comes up a lot, and we can save some shortcuts. This is a strong base and a weak acid, so we're going to make a buffer. And at half, the equivalence point. So bear in mind, because they're equal strength, you've got 25 centimetres cubed of the hydrofluoric acid. So half of the volume is going to be the half equivalence point. So at half the equivalence, we can say that pH equals pKa, or the concentration of H plus equals Ka. And it should say this in the question, but it doesn't. We need to know the uh, Ka value for hydrofluoric acid, and that is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. Now, you might be wondering, why does pH equals pKa at half the equivalence point? Well, if we think of our buffer equation where the concentration of H plus is equal to Ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the salt. And we remember that we've got a, uh, a weak acid, a strong base going to form the salt and water. And if you're at half the equivalence point, half the equivalence point, then all of the strong base has been used up in this case. Half of the weak acid remains and the equivalent amount of the salt has been used up. So what that means is the concentration of the salt and the concentration of the weak acid are equal so if they're equal, then say it was 2, for instance. 2 divided by 2 just gives you 1. 1 times Ka just gives you Ka. So we can say that concentration of H plus equals Ka at this point. So therefore, we can just simply grab our calculator. And all we have to do is do minus log to the base 10 of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 4. And this gives us a buffer with a pH of 3.18. So it's a nice straightforward calculation. And we've made ourselves an acidic buffer. Uh, in the second question here, a student reacts 100 mils of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide with 400 mils of 0.15 ethanoic acid. Calculate the pH of the resulting buffer solution. And we need to know the Ka value. Ka for this one is, I believe, 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. You would be supplied that in an exam question. So the first thing I will do is work out the moles of the NaOH. Now that will be 0.2 times 100. And then we have to divide by 1,000 to get the units right. And that comes out as 0.02 moles. Now, the moles of the ethanoic acid you've got the concentration, which is 0 0.15, the volume, which is 400, 
divide that by a thousand and that comes out as 0 0.06 moles so how much salt forms the moles of the salt Well, that must be equal to the moles of the NaOH, 0.02 moles. And the reason that is, is because the moles of the sodium hydroxide is going to be the limiting reagent because it's the lesser of these two. So the moles of the salt must be equal to the moles of the limiting reagent. And once you've reacted these together, the moles of the acid must now be 0.06 minus... 0.02 because some of it's reacted with the NaOH to give you 0.04 moles. So in terms of what's actually in our buffer solution, you've got 0.02 moles of the salt and 0.04 moles of the ethanoic acid. So now we get our buffer equation and we know that the concentration of H plus is equal to Ka which is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 times the concentration of the acid. Well we need to work out the concentration because concentration needs to be in moles per decimeter cubed. And what the student has done it has mixed 100 mils with 400 mils, which means that the volume is 500 mils. So there is 0.04 moles of the acid in 500 mils of the buffer. So the amount of moles in a decimeter cube would be that number times 2, which would be 0.08. And then we divide it by the moles of the salt that we also have to times this by 2. So that would be 0.04. And that comes out as 3.48 times 10 to the minus 5. And therefore the pH is minus log of H plus. And that gives us a pH of 4.46. Okay, one more just to reinforce this. In this question, a student wants to prepare a buffer solution that has a pH of 4.6. Calculate how much sodium ethanoate he would need to dissolve in 200 mils of 0.1 molar ethanoic acid. Ka is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. So the first thing that we're going to do is take this pH of 4.6 and we're going to convert it into the concentration of H+. So to do that on your calculator, I'm using a Casio here and I just want to talk you through it. You press the shift, then the log button might be different on yours this is just for a Casio and then it's minus the pH which is 4.6 and that gives me a value of 2.51 times 10 to the minus 5 and that's the concentration of H plus Now at this stage, write out your buffer equation. So concentration of H plus is equal to Ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the salt. Need to rearrange this because we are trying to calculate how much sodium ethanoate needs to be added, which is our, uh, that's our salt. So we need to make the concentration of the salt the subject of the equation. So 
So the concentration of the salt is equal to Ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the H+. Plus. So at this stage we can plug the numbers in. Ka is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. The concentration of the acid, we're told in the question, is 0 0.1 molar. And the concentration of the H plus we've just calculated over here is 2.51 times 10 to the minus 5. And that comes out as 0 0.0693. As the concentration of the salt. Now I'm running out of room on here. Let's see if I can make a little box just to finish off. So we know this is the concentration, so that's moles per dm cubed. And we know the volume is 200 mils. So if we know the concentration and we know the volume, we can calculate the moles. The equation n equals cv over a thousand. So that's the 0 0.0693 times 200 over a thousand. Which comes out as 0 0.0 139. I'm leaving it in the calculator though. And we know that we are dealing with the chemical sodium ethanoate, which has the formula CH3COONA. So that has a molecular mass of 82. 0.03. So if we know the moles is 0.0139 and we know the molecular mass, we just times them together to work out the mass. And I really am running out of room here. But if we times them both together, that gives me 1.14 grams as my answer. So to make this buffer solution, you take your 200 mils of the 0.1 molar acid and you dissolve 1.14 grams of the salt in it, and that would give you a pH buffer of 4.6. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it's helped you to get a good understanding of how buff buffers work and uh, how to do the calculations involving buffers. Remember, if you have found it helpful to like, subscribe and keep checking back for more content. See you next time. Take care.